All right, so we've been doing all these videos uh, with radicals to try to simplify the expression. So we did some where we were simplifying and breaking out perfect squares. We talked about how you can multiply them. Uh, we talked about how you can simplify fractions that are underneath radicals. And so we, uh, what we really want to do now is define what does it mean for something to be in simplest radical form. And if you take a look right here, there are, there are three things on our list uh, for something to be in simplest radical form. Uh, when you're saying it's simplified, there cannot be any perfect squares under the radicals. That's the first thing that we talked about with radicals, with breaking out all of those perfect squares like 4 and 9 and 16 that we can actually square root. You can also not have any fractions underneath the radical. So we talked about that last time, how you can uh, treat the numerator and denominator as separate problems and simplify them. Okay, and the last one is that you're not allowed to have any radicals in the denominator of a fraction. And that's the one that we haven't talked about yet. That's what this video is going to be about. Okay? So if any of these things is true, I have it in the brightest red capital letters that I could find. A radical expression is not simplified if any of the above things is not done. So you could have all the perfect squares out. You could have all the fractions um, out of the radicals. But if you have a radical in the denominator, it's not done. Okay? You could have fractions and, and uh, fixed. But if you have a perfect square underneath the radical, it's not simplified. Okay? So we, we know how to do these first two. We're going to spend our time talking today about this last one. How do we get a radical out of the denominator? Okay, so we have a process called rationalizing the denominator. And what rationalizing the denominator means is we want a rational number under the denominator, and square roots uh, and radical expressions are usually not uh, rational numbers. So we're going to fix that by uh, changing the way the expression looks. So if you take a look at this first example, the the problem, the only problem that I have that was on that last list we just saw about simplified expressions is that I have a radical in the denominator, this 14. All right, the way that I'm going to get rid of that is I'm going to say, okay, if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by what I'm trying to fix, in this case the square root of 14, okay, it's going to fix my problem. And the reason that we're doing this is that I can change the way a fraction looks. Um, say, for example, I had the fraction 2 thirds. If I want the denominator to look different, like let's say I want there to be a 12 there, I can multiply the bottom by 12. But if I'm going to do that, I have to multiply the top by 12 as well. And I could say this is the same as 8 over 12, right? And so 8 over 12 and 2 over 3 mean the same thing. They're going to give me the same value, but they look different. And that's really what I'm doing here. I'd like to change the denominator, and I'm going to change it by multiplying it by itself, because if you do the square root of 14 times the square root of 14, the answer is just 14, okay? And on the top, I'm going to say 2 times the square root of 14. Well, I can't multiply together something outside of a radical with something inside of a radical, so I'm just going to say this is the same as 2 square root of 14, okay? And so it looks like we're done, right? We've gotten rid of the, the problem. I, I got rid of the fraction. I'm sorry, I got rid of the radical in the bottom of the fraction. The, the square root of 14 is now just a regular 14. The last little thing that we have to watch out for with this is once I get that radical out, you take a look at my fraction, if I kind of forget about this square root of 14, it looks like I have the fraction 2 over 14, and that can be simplified a little bit more. Well, two, uh, if I divide this by 2 and divide this by 2, I end up with 7, and then a square root of 14 on the top. This is 1 square root of 14. All right, so I'd say this is my completely simplified radical. Okay, Just to see one more of these, um, if I want to fix the square root of the 7 on the bottom of this fraction, I'm going to say multiply it by the square root of 7 on the bottom. And that turns the bottom into 7. Okay. I'm going to multiply the top by the square root of 7 as well. This turns into 3 square root of 7 because I can't multiply something outside with something inside the radical. And in this case, 3 over 7 is not an expression that simplifies, so I'm just going to leave it like this, and I would say this is my simplified radical. We go down the list. The square root of 7 doesn't have any perfect squares in it. There's no fractions underneath the radical. And the 7 on the bottom is not under a radical, and that's good. That's what we're looking for. Okay, So we're going to move and take a look at a couple of more examples. All right, so if I take a look at this expression and I say our, our job here is to simplify this expression, well, the first thing that I'm going to say is a problem is, well, 45 over 11 is a fraction. It's not allowed to be a fraction, so I'm going to fix that. I'm going to say that turns it into the square root of 45 over the square root of 11. Okay? So now when I look at what I have now, I have a new problem. The new problem is that the square root of 45 is not a simplified radical expression, so I'm going to fix that first. I'm going to say square root of 45 has a 9 in it, so I'm going to turn this into the square root of 9 and the square root of 5. And I did that because I know that the square root of 9 is 3. Okay? So I simplified the, the perfect square. Okay? My second problem, I'm just going to bring up along the square root of 11 and do one thing at a time. Okay? My second problem now is I'm looking at this and I'm saying, wait a second, the square root of 11 is underneath, uh, is in the denominator, and I'm not allowed to have a radical in my denominator. So I'm going to rationalize this, and I'm going to say 
the square root of multiply by the square root of 11 on the bottom. Okay. Well, the square root of 11 and times the square root of 11 is the the square root of 121, and the square root of 121 is just 11. So if you notice, when I multiply a radical by itself, it just makes the radical go away. Okay. That means that I need to multiply the numerator by the square root of 11 as well. So I multiply radicals with other radicals, so I can multiply the 5 underneath the radical with the 11 under the radical, and that turns into 55. Okay, and then the 3 is by itself on the outside. It didn't have any other numbers outside. So if you notice, if I were to go down my checklist, 55 does not have any perfect squares in it. This only radical expression here does not have a fraction under it, and I do not have a radical in my denominator, so I would say this is now fully simple. Okay. One more example. Okay. So for this one, uh, the reason I'm showing you this example is because sometimes it's easier to, uh, to work your way backwards so we can simplify. So watch what I do here. I'm actually going to say if I take this expression okay, and I put it back underneath uh, one big radical, okay, so instead of it being numerator and denominator separately, being square rooted, I went backwards one step and I said, let's put the fraction back under the radical. And the reason I did that is because this is a fraction that simplifies. 8 over 24, I can say divide the top and the bottom by 8. This is the same as 1 third, right? So I can just say t over 3, okay? And now I have a slightly simpler fraction. Now I'm going to turn it back into uh, numerator and denominator, okay? And so I'd say the square root of t is not a perfect square, right? There's no squares here, right? I just, the only thing I have to fix is that I have this square root of 3 in the bottom. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. And I'm going to multiply this out. So I'm going to say the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the same as the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is just 3, okay? Both of these are underneath the radical, so I can put these together. Square root of 3t, okay? I am not going to cancel out this 3 on the bottom with this 3 on the top because this one is under a radical, the one on the bottom is not, and they need to be uh, the same. They either need to both be underneath or both be outside of the radical for us to be able to simplify them. So I'm going to say that this expression, it fits all three of my criteria. This is in simplest radical form.